Hi, my name is Sheldon Kratz from Cal State University Fullerton and this video is on the reproductive system regarding fertility and the organ systems involved. Reproduction can be defined as the action or process of making a copy of something. For the purpose of this presentation, taking a boy and a girl and creating a mini version of the both of them, aka a baby, through the fusion of reproductive cells, one cell from a male and one cell from a female. Before we can get a baby or even a pregnancy, we need to understand the process of reproduction and the organ systems it includes. The primary sex organs of the male reproductive system are the testes, which hang inside the scrotum, a pouch-like structure. Each male has two testes that have the shape of an egg. The scrotum contains two chambers known as the scrotal cavities where the testes are housed. These cavities are lined with serous fluid to reduce friction between the scrotum and the testes. In order to have normal sperm development, the testes must have a temperature of about 1.1 degrees Celsius. In order to maintain this temperature, the chromister muscle contracts and pulls the testes closer to the body. Sperm produced in the seminiferous tubules exits the tubules and passes through a maze of passageways known as the ret testis and efferent ductules in order to get to the epidemius, which is the beginning of the male reproductive tract. Areolar tissue, blood vessels, and large interstitial cells fill the gaps between the tubules. Each seminiferous tubule also contains nurse cells which help nourish developing sperm cells. The interstitial cells are responsible for producing male sex hormones known as androgens. The most important is testosterone. Sperm cells are produced through a process known as spermatogenesis. Three processes are involved in spermatogenesis known as mitosis, meiosis, and spermiogenesis. The first process, mitosis, begins with the mitotic divisions of sperm cells. After each division, one daughter cell travels closer to the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. Daughter cells develop into spermatocytes, which undergo the second process, or meiosis. Meiosis, the second process, is involved in the production of gametes or reproductive cells. Immature gametes called spermatids are the result of meiotic divisions in the seminiferous tubules. In spermiogenesis, the third and final process, unspecialized spermatids develop into mature spermatosa. Spermatosa enter the fluid in the lumen in the seminiferous tubules. Once the spermatosa enter the epididymis, the composition of the fluid produced by the seminiferous tubules is adjusted in order to dispose of damaged or abnormal spermatosa, and mature spermatosa are stored. It takes the spermatosa two weeks to travel from the epididymis and reach the ductus deferens. However, although the spermatosa leaving the epididymis are physically mature, they remain immobile. To become mobile, they must undergo capacitation. Capacitation occurs once the spermatosa mix with the secretions of the seminal glands and are exposed to the conditions inside the female reproductive tract. The ductus deferens propels spermatosa and fluid along the length of the duct through peristaltic contractions and has the ability to store spermatosa for up to a two month long duration. Sperm cells consist of three regions, the head which contains chromosomes and enzymes essential for fertilization, the neck which contains centrioles of the spermatid and mitochondria which provide energy and movement of the tail which moves in a corkscrew like motion, the middle piece, and the tail. The fluid component of semen is a mixture of secretions from the prostate, seminal, and bulbal urethral glands. Together these glands activate spermatosa, provide nutrients for mobility, generate peristaltic contractions that propel spermatosa and fluid throughout the male reproductive tract, and produce buffers that allow sperm cells to survive in the acidic urethral and vaginal environments. Semen is made up of three components, spermatosa, seminal fluid, and enzymes. The female reproductive system produces a variety of sex hormones and gametes. The female reproductive system must also be able to protect and support a developing embryo and nourish a newborn infant. Primary organs of the female reproductive system are the ovaries, the uterine tubes, the uterus, the vagina, and other external genitalia. The ovarian cycle is categorized into a follicular phase or pre-ovulatory phase and a luteal phase or post-ovulatory phase, each lasting approximately 14 days. The follicular phase begins at the start of the ovarian cycle. During this cycle, FSH stimulates the formation of the tertiary follicle and the oocyte projects into the anthem of the follicle. LH prompts the primary oocyte to complete meiosis 1 and produces a secondary oocyte which begins meiosis 2, but only if fertilization occurs. At ovulation, the tertiary follicle releases the secondary oocyte into the pelvic cavity where it is swept into the uterine tube. The luteal phase begins at ovulation. The follicle collapses and the follicular cells multiply. 
This creates the corpus luteum, which releases progesterone. Unless fertilization occurs, the corpus luteum degenerates usually 12 days after ovulation. This marks the end of the ovarian cycle. The vagina serves as a passageway for eliminated menstrual fluids, receives the penis during sexual intercourse, holds spermatosa before their entry into the uterus, and forms the lower portion of the birth canal. If fertilization, a pregnancy, and a baby result, the newborn gains nourishment through the milk secreted by the mammary glands of the breast. Milk production or lactation occurs in the glands and is exited through the nipple.